and welcome to the first of what will probably be quite a fair few tutorials on how to create a weapon in 3D Studio Max and animate it, texture it and get it into probably Counter-Strike Source. I've um, been doing a little bit of research into what weapon we're going to do and I thought maybe a Glock because it's quite simple. Yeah, it's quite a nice little gun. Uh, I didn't want to do anything that was too complicated because it would take forever to do and want to try and keep these tutorials as small as possible. Um, so, let's jump right in. I've got a bit of research, like I said, and got a nice lot of reference pictures. Uh, lots of different angles of the gun, different areas that would need to be modelled. Um, but of course you want a nice image which you're going to use in 3D Max as your background image and this is the one I found. What I'm first going to do is slightly uh, darken it up a little bit because these white areas when they're in max you can't really see the wireframe over the top of them and it can be quite hard to see where your geometry is um, in comparison to your reference picture. Um, so what I'm going to do is just stick it in Photoshop and just adjustments, brightness and contrast and just Minus 30, minus 40. Uh, that, you know, I'm just going to save. Okay. Right. So it's time to start setting up Max. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just create a plane for our reference image to go on. And what I'm going to do is resize this plane to be the same size as our image. So if we have a look, it's uh, 579 by 316. Uh, 579 and 316. Uh, I'm just going to pull this back in our viewport. Uh, just press M to get up the material editor and you can just drag and drop your image onto there and then you want to make sure that this little button here is ticked which is show map and viewport and then you can just click on this little button which will apply the map to our geometry there we go um, the next thing we want to do is we want to go properties or right click in uh, properties in this object and we want to turn off show frozen in grey because we want to freeze this object so we can't select it but we also want to be able to see what's actually on the plane if it's on uh, show frozen in grey or blank out the texture and we don't want that. So you just want to right click and free section. So now we can't actually select it. The next thing we want to do is just create a simple material which we're going to apply to our model. Uh, what I like to do is create a nice animated material. Uh, two frame material. So the first thing we do is just click on this little button down here which is our time configuration. And just put end time on one. If you press the uh, full stop and comma buttons, I think it is, you can uh, go through your frames. So I use those quite a lot. Question marks are always already uh, play animation, but don't really need that at the moment. Um, what we're going to do is, I like to work in a blue, I have no idea why, but I do. Uh, sort of desaturated blue. I think it's. Uh, works well against the grey background of Max. I guess that's my only excuse. I'm not even that much of a fan of blue, but who cares? Uh, so what I'm just going to do is create a box just to show you how this is going to work. What we're going to do is right click on the perspective up here and we're going to put on edge faces and I'm also going to work in faces because the smoothing groups annoys me. Um, also I like to keep all my uh, geometry in black and I'll show you why in a second once I've applied my material. If I drag and drop my material on there, uh, deselect, you can see that the wireframe comes up in black or the edged faces. Um, again, I think it goes quite nice with the blue, sort of stands out quite well. It's not quite the right blue. Okay, and what? Okay, so we're going to animate this material. What we want is on frame at zero, we have it as a solid color. 
and then on frame one we want to put down the opacity so I'm going to just um, select auto key put it on frame one and we're just going to select the opacity and put that down to 30 hit OK and lastly we want to uh, put the transparency on best because I've watched you get that funny funny transparency going on there so now as we you can see through and you can see on you can see your model I'm just going to put these also on the faces uh, transparency best uh, faces and transparency best I'm just going to go through and do that on all of them Oh, lastly, we've also got to put on the edge faces. Right, what well, we're going to do probably quite a bit of work in this left viewport. So, what I'm going to do is just press G and get rid of the grid. Right, so there we go. If I select, oh, I'm just going to put you on edge poly. Uh, just press number one to select vertices, and they will come up, and you can. You can see how you can actually see your reference image underneath and can follow it along with your vertices, etc. Uh, and then go back a frame and it's a solid colour. So you can get a better sense of this, you know, your form that you're actually creating. Um, the last little thing that I'm going to do for this tutorial is just to show you the increment save basically increment save stops 3d max from saving over your the same file over and over again when you save your work uh, so normally when you do control s it'll just save directly over your work which can be a pain in the arse especially when you are uh, you know you make a quick you make an error in your work try and go back to it but you can't because you've saved over it you know an earlier version so what I'm going to do is just save this out file save as uh, Okay, put this in tutorials, weapon tutorial, new folder, weapon, clock, that would do. So what we want to do is go customize preferences, and then under the files tab you have a, just here you've got an option to increment save, you want that ticked on, default it's off, but you want it on, uh, auto backs, make sure that's on 3, and make sure you enable it, that's really handy for when it crashes and you've got a uh, auto back to go to. So okay, what you'll notice is when I do control S to save, I get Glock 1, control S again, Glock 2, control S again, Glock 3, etc, etc, etc. And obviously, when you end up with loads, you can just go through and delete them. Uh, obviously it takes up a bit more file space, but in the long run it's very handy. Uh, so what we've done is we've created our background image and we've also created a material which we're going to apply to our model while we're modeling it. Um, and I think that's it for this tutorial. The next one will start on some modeling. Um, good luck.